So hello, hello, welcome to this episode of the Karma You podcast. I am talking about a topic which is very close to my heart. I can't believe I haven't actually spoken or done an episode specifically about this, but I'm going to talk about hypnotherapy, which is my specialism. It's how I started on this journey of helping people with their anxiety. So I'm going to talk about things like how I first discovered hypnotherapy, how it helped me in those early days, you know, over 10, 12 years ago now. I'm going to talk about the common myths that very frequently come up when it comes to hypnotherapy. I'm going to talk about the benefits and um, just a few other things that I think are really interesting that I think you're going to find interesting about this topic. So I first discovered hypnotherapy a long time ago, actually. So the the profession of hypnotherapy was in my mind from quite an early age. I, when I was about 11 or so, I was having some, I can't remember what, what even the health issue was, but my mom took me to see this osteopath and he was telling me, he was also a hypnotherapist and he was telling me, he was telling me about how hypnotherapy works and how powerful it was. And this just planted a little seed in my mind. And I didn't think about hypnotherapy again for, for a long time after that. Then later, this was probably about 2009, I was on a yoga retreat. I was on a yoga retreat and I, another lady who was on the retreat was a a doctor, she was a GP. And she was telling me about how she had trained as a hypnotherapist and she was using it for weight management type things. And she said that it was really, really helping. And so again, that just planted a little seed in my mind and was something that I just found really interesting. At the time, this is back in, yeah, this said 2009, I was on a gap year after studying nutrition at university and about to go the following year to work as a nutritionist. And so that was especially interesting to me. Now, Fast forward a few years, this is probably about 2010, when I was working as a nutritionist in Essex, in Colchester, Colchester Hospital. And I was struggling with anxiety myself. And I started to listen to hypnotherapy recordings around that time. I can't remember exactly what it was, whether it was something from YouTube, whether whether it was an app, something like that. I'm pretty sure I dabbled with Paul McKenna as well around that time. But I was struggling with things like social anxiety. I was worrying. I didn't feel like I could relax into myself. And I've I've spoken and written about this time in my life before. There was one experience where I was living with some sisters, really, really lovely people in this great house in Essex. And a lot of the time I would stay in my room and not be very sociable. And I remember because I basically had social anxiety, them one day inviting me to a barbecue in the garden, in the house that I lived in, and me saying no, just because I felt so blocked. And I just felt like it was impossible for me to say yes. I was just full of fear and, and really blocked around that. So I said no. And I remember sitting at my desk you know, trying to, like, pretending I was working. I could hear them outside in the garden, clinking beers together. They were having a bonfire. They were having a really nice time. And I was just feeling terrible, basically, terrible about myself. I remember crying, you know, hot tears falling down onto my laptop as I was trying to work. And, yeah, it was around that time. And I was like, actually, you know, I really want to work on my confidence. I really want to work on this anxiety that's, that's causing me to feel so blocked and stuck and unable to do things I really wanted to do and so I started listening to these recordings and I listened to I think it was just the same recording it was one for confidence and I listened to it every day I really went for it I was like right I'm going to work on this I'm not sure if it's going to work I you know I actually was pretty skeptical and didn't think it would work really but I was like I'm going to give it a really good try the instructions were to listen to it every day for two to three weeks so that's what I did and the results really, really surprised me. So I remember one particular change that I found myself automatically going and, you know, chatting to these housemates I had more. I remember going and, um, 
you know, knocking on one of the housemates' doors and chatting or having a meal with them in the evenings. And for me, you know, this might sound like such a simple thing, but for me, that was just the uh, the shift that created a big, big difference for me and made a big difference in my life. And that kind of showed me the power of hypnotherapy. That showed me that actually this is something that that can work. And it wasn't something that just like overnight changed my personality. It wasn't something that, um, you know, I didn't become like the most confident person ever overnight, but it just shifted things enough for me to be able to make those changes and feel more comfortable and more confident with people and just less anxious in general. So it made a really significant difference in my life. And it was soon after that, that I trained as a hypnotherapist and set on a path of hypnotizing everyone I knew, friends, family members, my boyfriend. I remember being so nervous to hypnotize people at first. But, you know, by this point, I, I must have hypnotized thousands of people at this point. Um, sometimes hundreds of people at a time. <laughs> if anyone's ever been to one of my workshops or group um, courses, you will have experienced that Um group hypnotherapy on Zoom works incredibly well. Listening to recordings works incredibly well. I have in the past obviously worked with people one-on-one -on -one a lot. I, I do that less now and tend to focus on the groups and the recordings because actually a recording can work incredibly well. We don't need to pay, you know, sometimes hundreds of pounds in, in therapy bills. We can actually get really good results from listening to recordings. So a little bit more about hypnotherapy. So it's not it's not necessarily the first thing we think about when we think about therapy. It's, it's quite often, sadly, one of the last things we try or one of the things, you know, we might have tried counselling, you know, you, you might have been to your doctor, you might have been down the cognitive behavioural therapy route and hypnotherapy is like the thing you try because you're not totally sure if it's going to work, but you're, you're kind of willing to try anything. And I think that's a shame because it is something that helps in a number of ways. And I think the reason that people don't think of it first in terms of therapies is because of a lot of the myths that exist when it comes to hypnotherapy. And I'm gonna to talk to you about some of those myths, some of those common things I hear people say again and again that are just not true, that maybe hold them back from trying something that could be really beneficial for them. And just to let you know that I have a membership, a monthly membership called the Karma You Collective. And every month we get together for a workshop with either me or a guest teacher. And I do a live hypnotherapy session with the group. You get a recording to listen to afterwards. And then at the end of the month, we get together for a sharing circle whereby you can share, you can hear from others. And it's really about remembering that you're not alone on this journey. Now, the Karma You Collective is for people who want to be consistent with their personal development. It's for people who have goals, you know, you want to do things with your life, but you're feeling yourself held back by yourself, essentially. So it's about personal development and helping you to move forwards with your goals. And we, for that, need consistency. And we also need community. We need other people who are on that same path as us to support us, encourage us, and help us to remember that we're not on our own. So that's why I created the Karma You Collective. And when you sign up, you get access to 10 hypnotherapy sessions, which are, you know, each one is worth far more than the monthly price of the, the membership. So it's an actually amazing value on, on topics like self-love, comparison, healing shame, having more energy, overwhelm, so many different topics. And so you get access to all of those past hypnotherapy sessions when you join the collective. So if you're interested in that, you can head over to karma-u.com forward slash collective. So it's karma-u.com forward slash collective. So onto those myths, those myths about hypnotherapy. So number one, this is one I hear <laughs> when I go to a dinner party and someone refuses to look me in the eye because they're scared that I'm going to somehow hypnotize them or, you know, <laughs> somehow force them to, to tell me all of their secrets. And it's that hypnotherapy makes you lose control. And that is just not the case. You do not lose control. When we get into hypnosis, it can feel like a very, very deep relaxation. You are aware of what's being said. You're aware of 
where you are, but you, you really go inside yourself. You drift into this deeper part of yourself. And for some people, for some of us at first, relaxing deeply can feel a little bit scary. There's something that, that can feel a bit like, oh, we're, you know, if we relax, we're somehow losing control. But the truth is you don't lose control. You can come out of hypnosis anytime if you want. And actually, you know, I like to, to remind people it's you're actually regaining control. You're actually getting control of your subconscious mind. You're getting control of your own thoughts and feelings and changing the programming that has caused you to be out of control. So you don't lose control. Um, you remain in control the whole time. And sometimes we can we can look at the stage shows. We can look at the Darren Browns and the Paul McKennas and we see people on the stage doing strange things and seeming to lose control. But what we need to remember is that that person who is on the stage, you know, doing whatever it is they're doing, clucking like a chicken is the classic. That person has chosen to be part of the show. And they've been selected specifically by the hypnotherapist, the hypnotist, the stage hypnotist, because they will go along with the stage show. And they're very, very susceptible to hypnosis. Now, you can't make someone do something that they don't want to do. But at some level, that person does want to go along with it because they are um, subconsciously, yeah, wanting to be part of the show. So it's not that that stage hypnosis is not real. It is real. I think it is absolutely real. That person is being hypnotized. But um, they are choosing to do that. They are choosing to be part of that. So the second myth, the second myth is that hypnosis is a magic wand. It's a magic cure. And actually it is a question. It is a question I sometimes ask my clients, you know, if we had a magic wand, if we had a magic wand, we don't, but if we did, you know, and I could wave that magic wand and tomorrow you'd wake up and things would be different. What would you want to be different? Now, it's not magic. It's not magic. Sometimes it can feel quite magical when after one session of hypnotherapy, you notice a huge shift or you, you know, I had one client have really bad IBS for 10 years and he came in and had one session and it was completely gone after that. And I've had tons of examples of that sort of thing. It can feel like magic sometimes. So there are, there are some people who will get that magic wand effect. For, for many of us, though, the results are significant and meaningful, but you're not going to become a different person. You're not going to suddenly, like if you've been struggling with confidence for 20 years, after one session, you're, you're not going to become like, I don't know, what's the, what's who's very, very confident, like Kanye West level confidence overnight, but you, you very likely will notice a uh, noticeable change, a noticeable shift. So it's not magic, might seem like the way, way for some people, but it is something that can have a significant um, impact. Myth number three, <laughs> again, this is something that people will say to me. So when people find out I'm a hypnotherapist, 95% of the time people will say, you know, can you hypnotize me? I've got this problem, like, can you help me with this? The other like 5% of the time people will say, I bet you couldn't hypnotize me. I can't be hypnotized. You know, there's no way someone tried once on holiday in Spain on a stage and they couldn't do it. There's no way you could hypnotize me. And I would I say to that person, yeah, you're, you're probably right. You're probably right because you cannot be hypnotized against your will. If you don't want to be hypnotized, no one can, can force you to be hypnotized. It's something that if we want to do, if we're choosing to get into that deep receptive state where we can make big changes in our lives, where we can shift beliefs and thought processes, it's something that we can do if we want to, but if you don't want to, you can't. So my advice would be is, you know, I mean, if someone's coming to see me as a client or if someone's joining my membership or joining my courses, you know, you want this to work, you want it to work. And so you are gonna be someone that is susceptible. You're gonna be somebody that is open to hypnotherapy. So, but if you don't wanna be <laughs> hypnotized, if you're, if, um, 
yeah, you definitely don't want to be, then you can't. And so the last myth, myth number four, I'm going to share with you is that it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Again, something that people say to me is, yeah, does it, does it work? I, I can't believe that it actually works. And I say to them, my job would be awful <laughs> if it didn't work. Can you imagine me hypnotizing 20 people a week, <laughs> clients in my therapy room and it not working? How demoralizing would that be? It just sounds awful. Yes, it absolutely does work. It works for most people on most issues, most of the time. It's not a magic wand. You can't be forced to do something you don't want to do. You can't be forced to give up smoking if you don't really want to give up smoking. But it does work for most of us on most issues. And if you're listening to something like a recording, if you're part of one of my um, my anxiety course, Your Karma Self, or my membership, The Karma You Collective, there are tons of hypnotherapy sessions within those courses and that membership for you to listen to, for you to choose the ones that are most relevant to you and to continue to listen to perhaps for a couple of weeks as you're going through the course. Some people say that they come back to things when they need a top up or want to boost their calmness or whatever it is that we're working on. So they are, they are things that you can come back to. So after I've spoken about the myths, I'm going to talk about the benefits of hypnotherapy. So number one, relaxation. So many of us struggle to relax. We find that it's hard to switch off. We might have tried things like meditation. We might have tried any number of things. And we might often find that our brains are still going, even on holiday, or even as we're trying to fall asleep at night, or if we're trying to meditate, the brain is still whirring. The thoughts are still coming. The, the worries are still present. What happens in hypnotherapy is that it it basically bypasses the, the conscious part of your mind. So it enables you to access the subconscious. And the subconscious is where a lot of our thoughts, feelings, and habits originate from. So we want to be speaking to that subconscious part of the mind. If you're somebody that is very much in your conscious mind, if you're an overthinker, if you are analytical, if you're a warrior, hypnotherapy is perfect for you because it gets to that deeper part of your mind. It gets to that deeper level. And many, many people tell me that things like meditation become a lot easier after they've experienced some hypnotherapy because you've had that experience of being able to go deep inside of yourself, being able to deeply relax. And it's almost as though we can train the body and train the nervous system to become more relaxed through this process. So second benefit, we can release our past programming. So we all have programming. We all have taken on board messages from our childhoods, from different experiences in our lives, particularly before the age of seven, we're like sponges, as I like to say. We just absorb everything we're told, the messages that we hear, the ways that people speak to us, the ways that people speak to each other, the things that happen, the way that you know our parents relate to us and relate to each other. That gets downloaded and becomes our programming for our lives. It becomes the messages that we are telling ourselves, the way that we respond to different situations. And some of that is not going to be so helpful unless you had a perfect upbringing and a perfect family, which none of us do, then some of that is going to be unhelpful and some of that's going to be potentially holding you back. So in hypnotherapy, we access the subconscious, you get into this deep state, we become more suggestible, we become more open to be able to take things on board that are going to help us. And so we can figure out, you know, what are the, what are the positive messages? What's the positive programming that we want to instill? You know, that might be about, for example, being kinder to yourself, you know, sending that message to yourself to be kinder to yourself so that it really is taken on board at a deep level and really is integrated into your being so that your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors are coming from that place of being kinder to yourself. Um, that's just one example. There's so many different programs around being more mindful, being more present, thinking about yourself in positive ways. Think about all the beliefs that could be holding you back, you know, not feeling good enough, 
comparing yourself to people, putting pressure on yourself, feeling like you need to be productive in order to be valuable and worthy. You know, all of these programs are things that we can replace in hypnotherapy so that you can be more grounded, more relaxed, more present, kinder to yourself, taking that pressure off yourself, all that good stuff that we that we all really want. Um, so that leads me on to the, the suggestions, benefit number three. We become more suggestible in hypnosis. The conscious mind is like the gatekeeper, the part of the mind that stops us from just believing anything and taking anything on board. It's that critical part of our mind. But in hypnosis, we're bypassing the conscious mind to the subconscious. So we're more suggestible, we're more open to helpful ideas. We're more open to thinking about things in a more positive way, thinking about ourselves in a, in a more positive way, the future. And so it's this openness to suggestion that really enables us to make those big changes. And then lastly, number four benefit of hypnotherapy is we can reshape our future. So we're in this open, suggestible state and we're also able in hypnosis to use our imaginations in a really powerful way. So many people will find that they, they can really visualize or feel or sense an image of themselves, how they want to be in the future. So we can start to imagine ourselves as, you know, confident versions of ourselves in the future or people who are calmly going out into the world, living the lives that we want to live, or we're, you know, we're standing up in front of work and, and giving that presentation, or we are, yeah, going on that dates and feeling confident and grounded in our bodies and, and showing our full personalities, whatever it is that you want in your future, we can really send that blueprint to the subconscious. We can really take on board um, a new image of ourselves that can help us as we move through our lives and move into the future to really step into that and really embody that. So I hope this has been helpful and you might have heard me say already, you can get a free hypnotherapy recording from me at my website, karma, C-A-L-M-E-R-Y-O-U, there's a dash in the middle, .com forward slash free. And you can try out hypnotherapy, you can see what it's like. I recommend listening with headphones, lying down on your bed or on the sofa. Choose a time when you're not going to be disturbed for the 25 minutes or so of the session. And then if you enjoy that, if you find it helpful, you're invited to join me inside the collective, which is my membership. For people who have goals and dreams and want to work with consistency towards, you know, the life that they really want to live. So every month we choose a theme. The theme for October is intuition and self-trust. So we're going to be working on that. So you're welcome to join us for that. And you also have access to the hypnotherapy library, where there are 10 hypnotherapy sessions on all sorts of different topics from positivity to reaching your goals, having more energy, overwhelm and changing habits. Really, really um, useful topics in there and are going to help you with the subconscious level that so many of our issues originate from. So come and join me in the collective. It's at karma-u.com forward slash collective. And if you have questions, you can always find me on Instagram at Chloe Brotheridge. Send me a DM and I'll answer any questions you have. So whether or not you join the collective or not, that's fine by me. I hope you find hypnotherapy in your life. I hope you find it useful. And I'm wishing you all the best on your journey to feeling better and calmer. So I'll chat to you later. Send you lots of love. Bye.